Listen. Hello and welcome to NBC IGN's Nintendo podcast. This week we have a special guest. His name is Alan, but you probably know him better as Stealth40k on Twitter. He's here to talk about Nintendo, JRPGs, and a whole lot more. Stealth, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for having me on. It'll be a fun time. Yeah, and also joining me this week is Tom Marks. Hello. And Zach Ryan. Hey, everybody. We will be talking a little bit about the Mario Maker update, the Animal Crossing update, and like I said, JRPGs and a lot more Nintendo stuff. So let's kick it off and talk about Mario Maker. There's a huge update. Have you guys checked it out? (laughs) (laughs) I, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I am really excited. I think it's really cool that they're bringing, uh, world maker to this whole situation like i feel like that was the the number one most requested thing at launch for this game so i i think it's really awesome that this has been in the the works for a while obviously and now people get to build their own like full-fledged mario games i think it's really really cool yeah and just to sum it up like as zach said you can make a world so you can basically make your own mario game and there are a ton of new additions as well like Gosh, there's a ton. There's all seven Koopalings, the frog suit, a super acorn that turns Mario into flying squirrel Mario, uh, the boomerang flower, a cannon box, a propeller box, trampoline uh, additions into the the level maker, and just a ton of other stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a bittersweet sort of thing too, because it's all this really cool stuff, and it's stuff that people have been wanting for a long time. And then it's also the last update. And it's like, that's, you know, you can't fault them for that. They can't just update the game for free forever. That's not like a viable thing for any reason. But like, it it's really cool to see them just be like, here's a shotgun blast to just like cool stuff to close it out, you know? Yeah, I do. I do think it's interesting that they, this last, you know, big update is going to be the last one because first of all, it's within a year of release. That game came out at the tail end of June last year. And so it's like an even shorter window of support than we've seen recently. Um, and it's also kind of strange because I feel like they've given, you know, like so much support to Smash Brothers, so much support to Splatoon and these other games that have these updates like this. So it, it is it was sort of surprising to me to see that that big like, oh, final update thing pop up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And still yeah. no updates for Mario Maker and uh, Mario Party in sight. Sorry, <laughs> South, what were you going to say? Yeah, I just love that Nintendo had the audacity, at least on the East Coast, to drop that announcement at about 11 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's been, always that's always a bit of a scramble too. Like even on you know on our end where it's like, oh, this news is there. It is okay. Now who's on to be able to cover this? Like yeah, that's really funny. But hey, you know what? At least it wasn't while we're recording. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, yeah. true. So I'm not going to complain. The 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 make the world maker is so cool too because it's not like Zach. You touched on this a little already. It's not just like a really cool feature. It's also something that the community has actively already been kind of bootlegging, Mm. right? Like they've already been like, hey, here's a series of levels that I made that are supposed to be sort of a a world of sorts. And they've just haven't had a way to do that officially. So it's really, really cool to have this because now that community can stop bootlegging that. They can just be like, hey, here's a game. Here is a series of things that you need to play in a certain order. Stealth, you're obviously a big Nintendo guy. Like your whole Twitter presence is like pretty focused on Nintendo stuff. I imagine you spent a fair amount of time with Mario Maker too. Are you pretty stoked about this news to get in there and build some worlds? Yeah, I'm particularly excited about the new power-ups because I've always felt the game was sort of lacking in that area. Mm-hmm. Even in the Mario 3 style, um, we didn't have the Hammer Brothers suit. We didn't have the Mario. We didn't have the Frog suit before. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have the Tanuki suit, so um, I was really excited to see the frog suit and the fact that now you can be Jesus by wa- by running across the water, and that was the, the first thing I thought of. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's this solid. The frog suit. Yeah. What else does the frog suit do besides letting you walk on water? Swim faster. Yeah. yeah swim and faster. and you can kind of control it a lot better than you could, um, without it. And also, mm-hmm. it lets you be an adorable frog, which yeah. You know, it's I sort of sort of buried the lead there, but yeah, I think the, the main <laughs> thing that the frog suit does is make you a very cute frog. So, uh, yeah, they, but it's not just power ups too, because you're right. They also had like, like the hats are like this weird middle ground, right? Where like now there's a bullet build like for the horizontal jetpack hat that's like basically its own power up, but it's not technically called that. Like there's a bunch of new stuff like that. You can pretend to be a Goomba. It's so weird. And- <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I really love all the weirdo stuff that they're doing with Mario Maker 2. I, I didn't get a chance to spend much time with the Zelda stuff, but I really love the, the addition of Link in that last update and what that meant for the game overall. So I'm excited to see how how designers and stuff implement these new power-ups. And, and I mean, mostly I'm excited to see how they build out full suites of levels and worlds, but I think it's a really, really cool update. I guess uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the kind of levels that people come out with and the time of type of full game. I mean, it kind of infinitely extended this game's life, right? So it's really yeah. it's cool to see. There are a few there are a few creators that I I follow on Mario Maker that I've played like a lot of their levels, and I'm hoping that they get out there and make full you know worlds worth of levels and stuff because like I, I would love to play like an entire new mario game designed by some of these creators that do like really outside the box kind of level design in mario maker i think that's really exciting and it, it also opens up like it, it it allows for new types of levels that we haven't really seen yet right like because be, when you're just doing like level 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 and kind of every level has to be like a traditional traditional ish level but now like people can make cool weird bonus stages where you just get a bunch of coins in a fun way and that fits into these worlds where it kind of would otherwise be less interesting in just traditional Mario Maker play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one-ups now matter because I believe the creator can now set how many one-ups you have um, and you can huh. get game overs. Right. Yeah, that's cool. That completely changes the way that you play that game because that game is, is, you know, sort of, you just kind of like muscle memory, you know, you build that muscle memory playing some of those more difficult levels. But if you have a specific one-up counter, like, yeah, that's really interesting too. So that's about it about the Mario Maker update. I'm sure there's so much more to go into, but there's another update, Animal Crossing. The Ooh, Animal Crossing baby. update has launched today, Thursday, when you're listening to this. We haven't played it yet. Sorry, nope. but it adds Nature Day, which runs from April 23rd to May 4th. And mm -hmm. we also learn about a bunch of other future events. But Nature Day specifically features Nook Miles challenges focus on nature. It includes, it introduces bushes with flowers. I know a lot of people are really excited about those flower bushes. So and, um, about look, bushes. How look how look, Tom is so excited about shrubs. You this don't man have loves shrubs. Shrubs. Literally two days ago, I was like, man, I wish there were hedges in this game. <laughs> And it was like, hey, guess what? Here are hedges. They and heard multiple different types of hedges. Yeah. yeah. And we're also getting Leaf the Sloth, who's bringing a garden shop to the plaza, which is where you can purchase the shrubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm being like overly excited for the sloth. I'm trying to share uh, the enthusiasm. <laughs> I, think it's really, I think it's really funny. Like I, all the, the conversation that I've had about this expansion, like people are the most excited about shrubs. Like they're just so excited about b putting bushes on their island instead of just flowers. I think that's really Boy. funny. Yeah. Well, there's so much like, so when I unlock terraforming in the game, I was kind of starting to fall off of Animal mm -hmm. Crossing a little bit. Like, not, like, disliking it, but, like, I was sort of starting to dwindle. And then I unlocked Terraforming, and it was, like, a, it turned into a different video game. It was, like, mm -hmm. the game went Super Saiyan, and I was just, like, okay, now I can do a million different things. And, like, part of that is separating space and creating these divisions between places. And previously, you just had fences and trees and flowers, and now you have fences, trees, flowers, hedges, bushes. Like, there's so many more ways to create varied separations, and it's it's just so exciting. It's so, so exciting. Yeah. What was what was your reaction, Stealth? Are you excited about shrubs or what? Um, I was less excited about the shrubs than <laughs> the other part of the update, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. Let um, us know. The, what, yeah, what is your favorite part? The uh, museum expansion. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and I've said it many times on Twitter that it, that might be like the greatest museum that I've ever seen in video games. Um, yeah. Just because of how cool it is. Um, and now they're adding an expansion for not only paintings, but sculptures and like special art exhibits as, as well. Um, and Red is back. And I believe Red docks at your island. I'm not sure where, um, but he has like a pirate ship and you can buy stuff from him. Some might be fake as per his usual shenanigans. Um, and yeah, it's just... Can, I, you, like... can you explain his usual shenanigans for people <laughs> like me who aren't, who don't remember his usual shenanigans? Yeah. yeah. yeah initiated. Um, yeah, he'll, you know, he'll have certain artworks on display to sell, and one of them might very well be fake. Or all, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a limit, but you might buy a fake art piece, and if you try to donate it to the museum, they won't take it. Okay. Yeah. Those are those are definitely some shenanigans. 
And the but fans I'm like, are really clever too, because they take actual pieces of art like the Mona Lisa, and then they just tweak something very slightly about them. Like, yeah. like in the Mona Lisa's case, I think it's like her hands are like the wrong direction. Like instead of the left being on the right, the right being on the left is or whatever. Like it's really subtle little changes like that that you could actually catch if you're familiar with the art. I, yeah, I had reached a oh go ahead. Yeah, and I believe um, in, in one of the screenshots they shared, um, I, I think the sculpture is called The Thinker. Uh, I think that's been in the game before, but what I don't think has is way back in, in, the, in the distance, you can see the Starry Night from Van Gogh, mm -hmm. which I don't think has been in the game before, and I just want that in my house. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny because like, I, I, I have all the house expansions, but I have one room that I just I didn't know what to do with, and right now it's just where I like throw my turnips on turnip day. Like It's fine. Um, but when I saw that in the, the direct, you know, I, I immediately thought, oh, all that counterfeit art is going to go into my house. Like, I'm just going to put all that counterfeit. Art. I'm going to have a fake art room. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be very uh, decorate your turnip room with the fake art. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's gonna I totally, like fit. I totally agree with self that I think, you know, as excited as I am about bushes, uh, the art museum is definitely the most exciting part. And and something I said on on Twitter as well, it's like. It's it's so cool, not because just because of the art is coming back in the museum, which is as you said already amazing, is being expanded to be even cooler. It's also such a good sign of like they're bringing back features that were in New Leaf that were initially missing in like not just like small things like bushes, but like hey, we're gonna add a wing to the museum. Like that's mm -hmm. not a small update for free. Right. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. I was kind of surprised that we didn't see um oh what's the man, the coffee man with the cafe from New Leaf? Brewster. Uh, Brewster. Yeah, Brewster. I was kind of surprised that Brewster wasn't coming along, but they'll probably save him for another update. I love that Wait, little who, who was the, the cat that they showed in the in the hedge maze? Rover. For the Mayday Rover. 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 Yeah. Okay. Rover and is speaking. the cat that usually like puts you to, like opens the game with you on the train, mm -hmm. but like didn't have a role in it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we'll get to see Rover. Yeah. So if you are still confused about what Nature Day is and what you will be able to do, we have a, we're going to have a wiki for that. So you can definitely check that out right now because I'm sure Brendan is working really hard to get that up before the show goes up. But there are Stealth. future events. <laughs> Stealth, you know it wouldn't be NVC if there wasn't at least one wiki plug. And we, you know, we, we went about 15 minutes this time and there, there you have it. So we're I think we did pretty for good. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're pretty good. Um, mark off your bingo cards. Um, but there are some future events, including the May Day Tour from May 1st to May 7th, the International Museum Day from May 18th to May 31st, and wedding season from June 1st to June 30th, And which is really nice because it'll include wedding items for all those people who had to cancel their weddings this year. Um, Ooh, this is that hit a little close to home, Casey? <laughs> I don't know if mine's happening next year anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to have an Animal Crossing wedding. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's fair. Some people are having graduations in Animal Crossing. So like, mm -hmm. why not weddings? I did, a, I did a birthday crossing or a birthday party in Animal <laughs> birthday crossing. crossing. A birthday crossing. That's what we called it. Huh. But no, uh, I, I loved the way that they rolled out the, these kind of first wave of, of new events. Like this is the kind of stuff that will keep me coming back to Animal Crossing. And it's, I had such a weird experience with, with Animal Crossing this week because uh, the, I, I had like a full-on meltdown on Sunday when I was trying to buy turnips because the online infrastructure is just so awful. Like I was waiting in line to get to a friend's island. I finally got there. I bought as many turnips as I could possibly carry. You know, I had to drop all my items at home, get on the plane, like get over there, blah, blah, blah. And then there like was a communication travel. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a communication error and I got back to my island and I got none of the turnips that I had purchased. And I was just like, I, I legitimately like stood up and just turned my switch off. I was like, okay, forget it. Like, I don't care. Like I'm done with this game for a while. And then I think it was like the next day they announced all this new stuff. And I was like, just when I thought I was out, <laughs> they reeled me back in. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really stoked for all this stuff. I, I think that, you know, the museum day is the one that is going to be like my big deal, I think. But yeah. Have you been liking everything self? Have you been having issues or like a love hate relationship or? Yeah. I mean, I've, honestly i've been playing the game literally every day since it released first thing i do i get my fossils i have yep. the, i have those appraised i sell everything i see what's in the store i kind of have a like a, a little ritual um i haven't unlocked the terraforming yet only because like for me um i need to unlock all the house upgrades first and i believe mm -hmm. i'm away from that um so I, i've kind of put some of the more story stuff aside for now um, but yeah, I've been pretty addicted to this game. Um, and 
I believe we knew add-on content was coming. Um, I didn't expect it to be this substantial and this soon. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. <laughs> well, if you compare it to, you know, like we were talking about Mario Maker earlier, you know, like that's such a tremendous amount of support in the first three months of Animal Crossing. You know, they've just outlined through June. And so I wonder what the sustainability of that is. Like, is this the pace that we can expect from this game moving forward? Like, is this team just completely dedicated to making these like series of events that will keep people coming back? Because like, if that's the case, I could easily see myself playing this game for, you know, the next year or more. Like, it's brilliant the way they've, they've done this, this rollout. Very and encouraging. Yeah. Yes. And I just wanted to mention sales wise, Animal Crossing New Horizons has now exceeded the lifetime sales of all previous Animal Crossing games. And the Nintendo Switch had its best, best sales ever in March 2020, beating out even its launch month in March mm -hmm. 2017. It's and been insane. Wow. <laughs> Something that I wanted to point out there is like those sales numbers for Animal Crossing came from the NPD. And yeah. NPD, the NPD only reports on the previous month. So the April NPD was reporting on January or March sales. So all of those insane Animal Crossing sales happened from launch in the last 11 days of March. So like that is an astronomical <laughs> sales number in like, it's, it's huge. It's just an uh, unbelievably huge selling game. And I wonder how much of that is attributed to just like, you know, people being locked down and thinking like, well, maybe I'll check out this Animal Crossing game that everybody's talking about. I mean, we learned that some people are getting Animal Crossing so they can put it in their Tinder bios to attract more potential online mates. So is that true? It is true. <laughs> well, okay. But anecdotal evidence. Sure. <laughs> based off an article I read on Polygon. So. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And speaking of sales, um, Famitsu put out a chart uh, in terms of Japanese sales of Animal Crossing New Horizons and every other Animal Crossing. And by the time New Horizons hit 3 million, the other games haven't even hit 2 million yet. Mm -hmm. So wow. the game has just exploded. Yeah, I think it's been sort of I think it's been sort of a perfect storm for Animal Crossing. You know, I think that the 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 conversation around the game leading up to the launch and then obviously like how it's just spread like wildfire after the launch has done obviously amazing stuff for it and and yeah, I, I every day I expect the the drip feed to kind of slow down on Twitter and, and TikTok and things like that. But every day there's just more and more Animal Crossing stuff. Like people are still really loving it. I'm in a, a Animal Crossing Discord that just pops off all day long, you know, every single day of the week, all night. Like it's it's wild. Another example of Nintendo taking a traditionally handheld game series, although, you know, it started on GameCube, but generally handheld game series, bringing it to Switch and finding insane success with it. They did it with Pokemon. They did it with Fire Emblem. Like, they, this is just seems to be continue to work for them. Yeah. Well, Tom, did you know that you could play the switch in a handheld mode? No. Yeah, that's true. You oh, can do both. That's mm -hmm. one of the things. Little known and, fact. <laughs> and real quick, before we move on to the best JRPGs on the Nintendo switch, uh, I just wanted to mention that Splatfest two is having another Splatfest rematch and it's going to be team Mayo versus team ketchup. As a bonus one-off Splatfest, it's going to run between May 22nd through the 24th, and we will revisit this topic at another time, because right now, it's time to talk about the best JRPGs on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that's right. I, I, you know, Stealth reached out to me on Twitter and said, hey, I'd love to, to come hang out and chat on NBC, and I thought, okay, so I know Stealth is a big-time Nintendo fan, and I know that he loves jrpgs so what a better opportunity to talk about some of the best jrpgs on switch than when he's on so i did want to start with stealth like i think we should go around robin and just kind of champion some jrpgs that we really love on the platform so why don't you kick us off Stealth? sure so the first one that comes to mind is one that came out last september is dragon quest 11 s definitive edition <laughs> um singing zach I, song yeah the game came out I believe a year before that on PS4, and I waited, and it was one of the hardest waits I've I've had in any <laughs> waiting game for a game, um, because like right around that time, the producer had kind of offhand mentioned that there was going to be maybe some additional content for the Switch version. We didn't know how much, so I'm like, okay, you know, I play a lot of games on Switch. I like the handheld mode. I'll wait, um, you know, and then we learned exactly how much new content was coming to that version. Um, and I, I'm in love with that game. It is so good. 
Yeah, I was initially kind of miffed that you would choose Dragon Quest XI S in this discussion because I know that you listen to the show and I know that you know how much I love that game. But I'm not going to fault anybody for wanting to talk about Dragon Quest XI. That game is killer. Uh, I, I love all the characters and I think that it's gorgeous. And the Switch version is like by far and away the like obviously it's the de- the definitive edition. And man, yeah. it's true. There's just but so much more. But it's true this time. Yeah, it, it yeah. really is. It, it folds in the 3DS content, which only came out in the Japanese only 3DS release. Um, adds in new quality of life stuff um, that PS4 owners wanted, and then also adds in a lot of new content. So yeah, it was just. If any game deserves the Definitive Edition moniker, it's that one. Well, it's also got the orchestrated soundtrack, which yeah. is amazing. Like that soundtrack is killer, and it's an even better version of the soundtrack on the Switch. So, yeah, definitely a top tier JRPG. Tom, what about you? What's uh, one of your favorite JRPGs on the Switch? Well, so I wanted to to shout out a semi unknown one called Final Fantasy VII. No, <laughs> um, that was a joke. Uh, I actually do want to have a question about this. So I wanted to call out, and this is a game we talked about on the show, I think two weeks ago, but the Valkyria Chronicles games, do those count? Because mm-hmm. they're tactics games, but they're JRPG tactics games? Like, I think it counts. So I'm just going to shout those out. Valkyria Chronicles 1 is one of my, literally one of my top 10 games ever. Like, it is genuinely one of my favorite games ever made. Um, and Valkyria Chronicles 4, I think I said on the show a couple weeks ago, is a slightly less interesting story for a far better, more polished kind of gameplay experience although it's still the first one is still really good um these games are just so amazing like Mm -hmm. there's kind of nothing like them really like the you try to describe the the genre they are and it's like real-time turn-based alternate reality world war ii tactics jrpg like it's just this amalgam of stuff yeah Um, i've always described them as like action tactics you know, Kinda, the, way yeah. that, the way that you control the characters on the playing field, you know, and then go into like a tactical mode. I've always thought that that was like such a cool system. And I'm surprised that more strategy games, more tactics games didn't kind of pick that up. But yeah, it's it's just like a really phenomenal series, both games. And you don't have to play the first one to play the fourth one if you'd rather play the fourth one. But like they they just kind of offer something that I've I don't think I've ever seen in another game, like even games that are semi similar they don't really have this flavor. It's it's really a series that is wholly unique within JRPGs in in a way that I feel like is really uncommon and I I am absolutely head over heels in love with. I I cannot recommend these games enough. Yeah, and the Switch version includes all the DLC that came out with the original PS3 release and it's it's constantly on sale on the eShop for under $20. I think even lower than 15 sometimes if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, there's yeah. no excuse not to pick that up. Yeah, killer games. So, what about you Zach? I know Stealth already mentioned Dragon Quest 11, <laughs> but is there something else you want to talk about? Well, I'm so Tom joked about Final Fantasy, uh, but I'm going to actually <laughs> throw it back. I, I, I just finished the Final Fantasy VII remake. It's not on Nintendo Switch, but it is phenomenal. Um, so I'm in a very Final Fantasy mood, um, and I'm going to kick us off with the sort of the underrated gem uh, of the Final Fantasy series that people kind of hate on a lot. But my first choice is Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I think that is a absolutely stellar RPG that is ahead of its time and does a lot of things that. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation in 1997, it, the biggest blockbuster RPG that ever, JRPG that ever existed. Like, put JRPGs on the map in the United States, you know, like, like made that series what it is today. And that is an extremely tough act to follow. And I think in 1999, when Final Fantasy VIII was released, you know, people were disappointed because it wasn't, it was so dissimilar from VII. Um, Going back to that game now, it's really amazing what what that game did at that time. The story, not not just the story that it told, which is absolutely bonkers. It's about a bunch of teens that are in a military academy, and also the academy is funded by a monster that lives under the school. It's wild. Anyway, uh, there's also time travel, um, but and they go to space. But uh, I think that that you know, having having played through Seven Remake. There's a lot of things that Seven Remake picks up uh, from other Final Fantasy games, and in this case, like the way that that you know the junction system works in Eight is very reminiscent of 
uh, seven or seven remake is very reminiscent of that, and that you can you know equip different magic for different uh, affinities and and spell uh, bonuses and stuff like that. And like eight did that first, and eight did things like uh, the draw system where you treated magic as an item, and and like it had these like insane CG cutscenes that that are some of the best in the series. And so uh, yeah, my first pick is Final Fantasy VIII. Here's here's a hot hot uh, hot take that I've always had about Final Fantasy VIII. Mm. I think Squall's Gunblade is way cooler than Cloud's Buster Sword. I'd pick the Gunblade any day of the week over the Buster. Uh, I. But which one's more iconic, though? That's fair, I, but right. I guess cooler. But Gunblade cooler. is so cool. Yeah, if they were to do a Final Fantasy VIII remake, the Gunblade would be such a cool mechanic. Like if they did it in the same vein. Not that they ever would, because it would make a fraction of the money that Seven Remake will make. But yeah, <laughs> that would be a very cool mechanic. Yeah. What about you, Casey? Yeah, you got a JRPG pick. Yeah, of course. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> that counts, right? <laughs> so mm-hmm. this is my game of the year last year, and I know we've talked, we've talked it into the into the dirt. I feel like there's not much more to say about it other than we all agree that we love this game and think it's amazing, <laughs> and everyone should play it, and it'll make you like uh, character relationship building, even if you didn't think you did. Hmm. That's true. <laughs> you'll just like start wanting to have tea time all the time because of this game no um of course there's a lot more to fire emblem three houses than having tea time with your favorite characters but the combat and how do i the the progression system for each of the individual characters and how different you can make each of them play is incredibly interesting the voice acting is great the localization in this game is amazing um just overall awesome the story is crazy it's insane how much content they fit into this game with three different storylines to go through i still haven't even finished my second one there's a new game plus there's dlc there's a lot to love about fire emblem three houses and i think it is top tier jrpg um Mm -hmm. stealth what do you think about fire Emblem three houses because we all know how we feel about it (laughs) I love it. And um, what was interesting to me is Nintendo's marketing around it. Um, They really underplayed how enormous this game is and Mm -hmm. um, how little of the game is is really, while the, um, while, you know, your hub area, the name is escaping me, um, you know, they they kind of marketed that a lot as like your main hub. Um, But most of the game takes Garrick Garrick Mock. Mock. I don't know why I had a brain freeze there. Oh, no, I I had it took me a bit to remember it as well. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, while like for all the paths, you know, maybe 30% of of each path takes place there and you go back there, um, you know, it really spreads out from 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 that point. Um, and, you know, it, it was just interesting, like which path people picked first, like I picked Dimitri, um, which people will find out isn't really like the story path, um, you know, and uh yeah, I just love that game. It's it's one of the best strategy RPGs I've ever played. Um, and the fact that Koei Tecmo actually developed that game with only like a skeleton crew of intelligent systems is incredible. I don't think that gets talked about enough. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah. Kudos so, to that team. And I know there was one other game that you wanted to talk about, Stealth. Yes. Um, Xenoblade 2. Here we go. Probably one of my overall favorite. I know how you feel about that. No, I um, I need to play it. This is my fault. It's not the game's fault. <laughs> I've already I've already committed to the fact that like you know it's a glaring omission on my part that I didn't l- really stick with the second game, but I am gonna play the remake of the first game when it comes to yeah. Switch in May. So I'm stoked for that. But sorry, go ahead. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the sequel to is really the sequel to the first one, but you don't know really how it all fits together until much later in the game. But um, the music is amazing. The open I don't think there's a better open world. Well, there, there is there's Witcher 3, but um, <laughs> before that, um, there hasn't been a better JRPG world. I don't think better realized. Um, the characters are all very likable. The localization's amazing. The locations are great. Um, it, it's also a very big time commitment. Um, even if you don't do any of the side quests or any of the blade quests, which you probably will miss most of them in a playthrough, um, it's over a hundred hours. It's a big, big game. Um, yeah, and it's definitely one of my favorites, but 
I do recommend holding off playing that game until you play Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Okay. That should be played first, and then you play Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and then you play the DLC, Torna. Um, that, that's kind of the order for that. So yeah, okay. it's a big time commitment, but if you're willing to put it in, you'll, you, I think you'll enjoy it. Sweet. Okay. Good Rex, yeah, good Rex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are some of our favorite, and I mean, in our opinion, best JRPGs on the Switch. I also just very quickly wanted to mention Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I don't know if it super counts, but I want to put it out there anyway. So, so there's, you, there's, there's 1,000 hours of JRPG for you to play. <laughs> yeah, no if kidding. You, if you can't play Final Fantasy VII Remake, don't worry. The Switch has still got you back, got your back with all of these great JRPGs. And you could always oh, yeah. just play the original Final Fantasy VII on the Switch, too. It's true. I was also and, like, I was thinking about it the other day, like the Switch might be the ultimate Final Fantasy machine because it's got uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, 12, and then 15 Pocket Edition. Uh, and then the potential for all the Super Nintendo and NES ones to come to the virtual console, well, virtual console, the Nintendo Switch online service. So, yeah, you could be looking at some serious Final Fantasy love on that. I'm, but not, giving it, I'm not giving it that title until Crystal Chronicles comes out. Oh, Somewhere what is that happening? We, we say this every <laughs> single time we bring it up. We just keep forgetting. I did a conversation with Brian about that like two years ago. Yeah, I was going to say somewhere in the distance, Brian's ears just perked up. He's like, somebody said Crystal Chronicles? Yeah, yeah oh, I checked man. the website for that game maybe a week ago because I was like, wait, this is supposed to come out. It's, it's still summer 2020. That's all there is. Yeah, well, it remains to be seen, I guess. And... So that, yeah, like I said, it's about all the best JRPGs on Nintendo Switch, not including uh, Rune Factory 4 Special. But next up, we're going to talk about games out this week, including, no, I don't know, do you guys just want to pick it up with another JRPG? Let's talk about Trials of Mana. <laughs> it's a good week to talk about JRPGs with <laughs> yeah. Trials of Mana coming out. Uh, so this is good. Oh, this is the 3D remake of the 1995 game, uh, Second and Set 3, which came out with the package of mana games that came out last year mm -hmm. stealth please correct mm -hmm. me if i'm yeah, wrong you're... what was yeah what um was the collection called a uh, collection of mana mm -hmm. yeah, of, of course <laughs> but um uh seth just reviewed this for us and he gave it an eight out of ten for great he said trials of mana is absolutely charming and does an excellent job keeping what works from the original while upgrading its aesthetics to the modern era um he also said that it's just a great it's a great remake but it's 16 boot re, uh, 16 bit roots are often hard to ignore um did you guys mm. play the demo at all no i yeah, i had it on my list of to do's for uh switch times but any time that i fire up my switch i've just been playing animal crossing so i haven't played yeah. that i haven't played the bravely or uh, the uh bravely second demo there's a bunch of stuff that i want to check out so uh what about yourself yeah i played the demo briefly um and it, it reminds me of the ease games from falcom mm -hmm. i don't know if any of you have played those or, or know about those but um yeah they're the more action rpgs you know where you can level up and just fight waves of enemies but that's kind of what it reminded me of i did i didn't play it long but the one thing i did want to mention is nintendo's marketing has been very much on point because last night the japanese smash brothers account announced the trials of mana spirit board event for this week um at at the same time which is pretty cool too yeah, yeah that's, that's really a, neat love a good cross promotion you know i did finish the demo but i've got to tell you jumping back and forth between final fantasy trials of mana and monster hunter is really difficult because the dodge button on all three of those games is in a different spot um <laughs> <laughs> but i it's really interesting and i like i said seth said that it's very true to the original and that sometimes harms it but it's interesting because while playing it it's like oh this feels old and it, i don't really know how to articulate that well it's just it feels like an older game but that's not necessarily a bad thing it just i guess it feels nostalgic the music was amazing the voice acting on the other hand kind of irked me i don't There's... know what's going on with that i don't know if it's the voice actors with the dialogue that they have to read but... I've, seen some, I've seen some clips making the rounds on Twitter today uh, of both like bad voice acting in that game, like like just the actual reads are bad, but then also the quality really varies wildly. Like it sounds, the audio quality will like fluctuate between lines. It's it's pretty strange. 
in that regard. But one of the really cool things about this game is that you can choose a party of three between six different characters, and each character has a totally different story. So there's a ton mm. of content in this game. And as soon as I met the character Charlotte, I was infinitely glad that I didn't put her in my party because she sounds like I don't you should just go look up videos of her because the way she speaks is as if she's a two year old, but it's very exaggerated. But also she's 15, okay. which I didn't know. I, I was I thought she was like three the way she was talking. I just found it annoying. Anyway, the yeah, combat I saw, was <laughs> I saw I saw uh, Mr. Negative on Twitter tweeting about how he was sure that there were going to be swaths of people who pick that character get like 10 minutes in the second you hear her voice and restart the game and then i saw imran khan tweet that exact thing be like oh i restarted goodness. the game because i picked her and i just couldn't handle it so there yeah you, go. you know well, in seth's footage he's using that character he had no complaints about her i guess she is a really good healer but um i hope we have some guides going up about this because i spent such a long time picking my party i just I need the optimal party. I don't want to make a bad party and then be upset halfway through because I'm the type of person who will quit if I know I didn't pick an optimal party. So <laughs> hopefully there's something out there soon about that. But it's very interesting. Again, it got an eight. Um, it, the combat was cool. I didn't finish it. Read Seth's review for more information. But there are some Ooh. other games out this week as well. Tom, take it away. Uh, the two I really wanted to shout out were yes. Picross S4 is mm -hmm. coming out this week uh it's coming out on the 20th for ten dollars real quick bone to pick with this game the whole marketing strategy around this game has been the most puzzles in any picross ever and it's like calm down you've got 485 compared to s3's 480 and yeah. three of those are only available if you own the other three games so really it's like 482 <laughs> plus three bonus ones which but, is like mm, okay but, Tom, what hey, if those they're five not wrong <laughs> they're not wrong they're not what if those five no extra more. ones are those ridiculous 40 times 30 puzzles that will take you like two hours to complete though they are that and i uh i'm looking forward to playing it i'm i'm just excited for more jupiter picross so this is an exciting one i'm sure pair would echo it uh that sentiment uh because they just don't make bad picross games so i'm i'm looking forward to it the other game i wanted to shout out was um also coming out on the 23rd for 20 dollars is sunless sea submariner edition uh if you don't know sunless sea is an old older game for called for not older like it last what, like I think it was like five years ago, something like that. Um, it came out. It was. It's like a top-down gothic Victorian fantasy game where you're piloting a boat in like a subterranean ocean, and it's this really, really wonderful RPG adventure game from Fail Better Games. Uh, great writing, really, really in, like immersive, gloomy feel to this world. Uh, Sunless Skies just recently left early access at the, I think it was the end of last year, and it's also really, really good, but not on Switch yet. I'm really, really hoping that Sunless Seas Submariner Edition, which is it with its Submariner DLC, means that we'll get Sunless Skies later, because this is just a very, very good, like, just check it out. It's a really, really what? great top-down adventure game. So, top-down adventure game. So, like, action? Yeah, it's like action okay. adventure. It's, you're, you have a top-down view of the ocean, and you're looking at a little boat, and everything since you're in a sunless sea you everything's pitch black and you're sailing around kind of just like going from port to port and island to island completing quests and talking to people um and the game i believe has permadeath so like if you they, they they tweaked this for sunless skies but like if you're playing you just like you can lose everything and have to start over in like a really brutal way um there might be options to tweak that though i don't entirely remember at this point it's been a long time but yeah it's it's a it's a very 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 good action actiony adventure RPG ish sort of combo, uh, very very cool. Nice. So we just talked about Trials of Mana, Picross S four, and Sunless Sea Submariner Edition all coming out this week. But let's talk about what we're playing. I already know the answer to that. The answer is Animal Crossing. <laughs> it's Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've actually I've I've taken uh, some time away from Animal Crossing because I wanted to blast through Final Fantasy VII. Um, but like Stealth said earlier, like you know, I've still been jumping in. I did eventually buy some turnips and sell those off. I wanted to give a shout out to Chris, uh, an NBC fan who hooked me up on Twitter with an insane turnip price on Monday of all days. So that was cool. But yeah, oh yeah, shout out shout out to Kevin last night too, who did a similar thing for me and Pear. Invite an uh, NBC listener invited us onto his island and. He had six forty seven. Bell selling turnip selling for six forty seven. That's yeah. That's thirteen off of the highest it can possibly be. It's amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Very cool. But I'm looking forward to getting back into it. 
I've been I've been away from my island for too long. My animals are getting weird. So are they? Even though it's just been a couple days. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're saying weird stuff to me when I come back. So yeah, I gotta start checking in on them a little more often. Uh, update us next week on what kind of weird things your animals are saying to you. Sure. All right, I will. <laughs> and um, Tom and I are playing Monster Hunter World, and Tom's playing Persona Five World, both non Nintendo. So we'll move on. <laughs> just pretend we're playing Animal Crossing like everyone else, and it'll be fine. But let's. Do question block. Everyone's sure. favorite game. All right. Um, stealth. This one is for you and it's from Miguel Zadariga. Zeldariaga. I hope I got that right. I think but, the second was right, yeah. All right. <laughs> what was the Nintendo game slash franchise that shaped you to be the Nintendo fan you are today? Ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. And um, I think for when I was born, I think a lot of people are going to have the same answer and it's Mario. Um... The first system in my house, not the first one I bought, was an NES, and Super Mario Brothers was just far and away one of the greatest things I had ever played, and that got me hooked. And then, you know, Super Mario Brothers 2 came out, and that was different, but it was still good. And then, at the time, Super Mario Brothers 3 was probably, like, the most anticipated game of all time. Um, but, yeah, Mario definitely set me on the Nintendo path, which I think is the same for a lot of people um who grew up in the nes snes era um yeah and you know what's crazy is the quality of mario games is as good now as it was like 35 years ago when you know mario first hit the nes um which is pretty incredible are you would you consider yourself a mario guy or a zelda guy um i really don't like the the original legend of zelda i don't think it holds up at all um, mm-hmm. and I did not like Zelda 2. Um, I really became a Zelda guy with, um, A Link to, uh, A Link to the Past mm-hmm. on, and I said, that, that's when I became a, a Zelda guy, but I was a Mario guy b- before that. So I wanted to extend this question to everyone else on the panel as well, because I think it's an interesting question. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting, because I, as a kid, I'm a little younger, so I never had an NES, actually. I, I started I didn't either. on the SNES. And and the SNES was, like, I missed... Because I agree. I don't think that Zelda 1 or Zelda 2, like, really hold up. I think they're great classics from, like, kind of a legacy standpoint. But, like, playing them today, they don't hold up in the same way where, like, you can pick up Link to the Past today, and it's still a good game. Um, and Link to the Past is, is kind of my answer. And Zelda, in general, is, like... That was the game where I... I think I might have told this on this show before, but that was the game where my mom would be staying up after mm-hmm. we went to bed playing Link to the Past, and I realized that like video games were more than just like a thing I wanted to do. Like it, it that was the game that was very formative for me. It was Link to the Past. What about you, Zach? Um, yeah, Super Mario Brothers Three was the first video game I ever played, like full stop. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I remember you know like trying so hard to get to the like I think it was the fourth world. And it just took us like what felt like months to do it. It was a friend's, I didn't have a Nintendo. My, my friend next door had one and I would go to his house to play Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, and then, uh, you know, I begged my parents to get me a Nintendo so I could play Super Mario Brothers 3 and they wouldn't do it, but they did think that it was okay for me to have a Game Boy for some reason. <laughs> so um, Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins, like I played shortly after Super Mario Brothers 3. And I think those two games in tandem were the games that I was just like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Nintendo guy, like I'm a Nintendo fan. For me, I, the first system we had in the house was the Super Nintendo. And the first game I ever played was actually Super Mario World. Mm-hmm. And I remember my, so my dad always worked at boatyards. He's a boatyard manager. So we had the opportunity in um, another Florida story. But um, so we, we went on boats sometimes just to go fishing and like hang out. And I remember one specific occasion we went out with another family friend and he had a kid around my age at the time and they had a super Nintendo hooked up in the boat. And instead of hanging out and doing boat stuff, I was like, I'm just going to go in the cabin and play this game that I have at home. And that's when I solidified my, uh, my status as a antisocial gamer, I guess, even though I'm (laughs) I'm not an antisocial person, but yeah, (laughs) I guess super Mario was the first one that really got me into it, but I stuck with it probably because of Ocarina of time and Pokemon. Yeah. Two solid choices. And this next question is from Aaron Quinn. And he asks, do you think Nintendo will ever do a Game Pass slash PS Now service? 
No. If, if you're if you're watching, if you're not watching us, we're all just shaking our heads and like just it's quiet I'm disappointment. Contemplative. But yeah, I'll, I'll defer to stealth on this. I mean, never say never because nobody ever thought that Nintendo would make mobile games, and now they do. <laughs> um, so you know, y you really never know what lengths the company will go to to make money. Um, so if they think that they can do it and it's worthwhile to them, it's possible. Um, right now, when they're making money hand over fist, selling their first party Nintendo games at full retail, probably not. Mm. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, like, I think that's definitely on point, especially because like there are a lot of other developers and publishers and manufacturers who think that the game, who clearly think that the Game Pass model is the future, like is just going to replace traditional game purchasing. It's the reason you see microsoft investing in cloud stuff a lot it's the reason you see them in bulking up their their team of first party studios to support game pass you see ubisoft doing certain things that are similar you see google doing certain things that are similar so like i i think that there is a universe where if that format does take over then yeah they, they'd be silly not to do it but it's it's i agree that it's probably not going to be like something that they just like do actively until they need to uh, I think just looking at it historically, like Nintendo has come to the decision that they make way more money selling and reselling their games to fans that will buy them over and over again and repackage, you know, uh, op options, right? Like how many times have we heard Brian tell the story about the number of times that he's brought the original Mario Brothers on different platforms and stuff? Mm -hmm. And like Nintendo fans will will pay that premium to, to have those experiences it, it, piecemeal separately again and again and again. Um, you know, I think that that the original animal crossing having an nes that you could play nintendo games on opened their eyes to the idea that like oh our fans really want this legacy content they really want these legacy games and we can just sell it to them over and over and over again and they'll buy it so yeah you know what you're you're completely right like i was gonna say what i want them to do i would like them to do a game pass type service where they just open up the virtual console like all, their entire library of what they had available on the wii and the wii u but on the Switch and made that right. the subscription service or maybe added another tier to um, Nintendo Switch Online to make it a little bit more expensive to have access to that library. Mm -hmm. But like you said, don't think they're going to do that because if they can charge people five bucks for, per game. We can dream. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I mean, I would probably rebuy Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time and a bunch of the other old Nintendo Switch. Oh, a hundred percent, you would just like I would, just each. like yeah, exactly. And I, so, I believe on a prior show you all covered um the thirty fifth anniversary Mario rumors. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, I mean why put Mario Galaxy on the eShop for twenty dollars when they can sell you a remaster for sixty and mm -hmm. it's gonna sell five to ten yes. million units. Yeah, yep. totally. It's, it's, much so it looks like that is about all the time we have left um for this week's nbc ign's nintendo podcast everyone where can they find you on twitter uh well you can follow me uh at zachary sd um on twitter where i mostly tweet about animal crossing these days and what about you tom i'm at tom r marks and stealth uh you can find me at stealth 40k yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you joining in our conversation about JRPGs and all the other Nintendo stuff we talked about. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at ShinyKCD. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, this is the only place you can. Get, Get the, the thing. thing. <laughs>